Welcome to EQS Electric, the channel for my EQS 450 Plus from Mercedes-Benz. I promised in the comments on the videos before that I will show high-speed German Autobahn driving and I did that already for my Teslas I had in the past and there I have some data, consumption average speeds reached and you see these data at the end of the video compared to each other. I will finally calculate how far the car will get with a full load of these 108 kilowatt hours and you may guess now how far that car will go if I'm going full throttle. Uh, no, full gate. The IVGT is in it, so it's full gate. Yeah. I had jobs in the past which took me quite regularly on German autobahns and all the cars I owned before, Mercedes, uh, BMW up to the 12-cylinder engine, engine, the Lexus, and they all had speed limits around 250 kilometers per hour, which equals 155 miles per hour. And I was able to drive these speeds quite regularly, most often in the evening. And I have relatives uh, which own yeah, cars without those limiters, not that they uh, remove them. No, uh, there are cars in Germany without those speed limiters. One of them is uh, Porsche. Yeah, it's in Germany is called Porsche. It's a name uh, of an engineer, a past engineer. And uh, so uh, these cars uh, have no limiter in it. Please note, this is all completely legal in Germany. There had been always rumors from 1998 on when the first time the Green Party came uh, to power in Germany that there will be a speed limit of about 100, 120, 130, which is 81 miles per hour uh, very soon, but uh, nothing happened so far. Uh, last year, in, in fall, uh, the Green Party came again to power and everybody waits for the speed limit and everybody talks about, but there is a problem. If they introduce a speed limit, then the German cars like Mercedes, BMW, Audi, Volkswagen do no longer have the need to build those good chassis brakes, everything, because those high speeds uh, need those good chassis and then they will remove them and then people will buy other cars as well and the German automotive industry will <laughs> heading south. Um, everybody in the industry is very much scared about that and even the conservatives of course and the Labour Party here in Germany uh, they are against that because they have strong unions in the automotive industry and all they know what will happen if this speed limit will be applied. Driving fast includes several risks, of course. First is a physical uh, dimension. It's the kinetic energy in the car and that rises with the square of the velocity. Here you see the formula. The kinetic energy equals half of the mass multiplied with the velocity squared. So if the velocity doubles, the energy is four times as high. So this is, if you're going 50 and you're going 100, it's four times energy. If you're going 200, it's 16 times the energy. This is quite a lot. So in the end, we're driving small kinetic bombs. <laughs> yeah, this is very offensive, but uh, lets you better understand what's going on. Second is your reaction time. If you're driving very fast and you're very concentrated, you will probably need half a second for a reaction. And at 200 kilometers per hour, that will, yeah, will result in a distance you traveled in those 0.5 seconds of 28 meters. That's 91 feet. So this is quite a distance, even in that short time. And if you're not very concentrated and you need one and a half second, wow, <laughs> you're close to 100 meter. Yeah, so this is really, really a lot. It's good to have a clear view. So if the road is winding, uh, don't do those high speeds. 
there had to be clear, straight, very few traffic. There is as well no speed limit at night. Legislation, German legislation, lets you assume that there is no unlit obstacle on the road. So this is the suggestion or the assumption the politics takes. And this might not be true. There might be something on the road. Uh, well, it's very unlikely that this happens, but it might happen. And I had one accident in the last 40 years or 45 years uh, with that. Uh, there was a, a wheel from a truck lying on the road and I went over it at night at 160 kilometers per hour. That's uh, 100 miles per hour. And that was a small Japanese car. And it was very, very lucky. Uh, they had to replace uh, two parts of the chassis on the right hand side of the car and everything was fine. Uh, well, <laughs> the truck was on the parking lot uh, three kilometers to the right where I drove <laughs> as well. Yeah, when I take such fast rides, I do it in spring or in summer when the sun rises very early and the videos show wonderful light. And here you have the first impressions of this very, very early morning and the autobahn between Munich and the Alps where my company resides, it's the internet portal whiskey.com where fine spirits meet, is windy and is going up and downhill and it's too short for a proper run. And it only has two lanes. So if there is a truck passing another one, <laughs> you're lost. <laughs> it take several minutes until uh, you have uh, a free road again. But there's the A8 between the two biggest southern German towns, Munich, where BMW resides, and Stuttgart, where Mercedes and Porsche resides. It has three lanes in each direction. So this is good for passing traffic, that there is still uh, an empty lane for you. And it was newly built a decade ago, I think. And uh, the surface is flat, very good. and. Here you are able to have a run of about 100 kilometers, 62 miles at full yeah, gate. So IGBTs, which I said before, insulated gate, gate bipolar transistor. So I'm talking about full gate and not full throttle. When are the least amount of cars on a road? Well, on Sunday morning. And we have a ban for lorries on the roads. Uh, above 7.5 metric tons, uh, starting from Saturday 2200 uh, until Sunday night 2200. Yeah, on May 22nd, 2022, I started my test from my hometown uh, at Lake Starnberg in the south of Munich. And to the start of the A8 uh, at Munich, I drove quite slowly at 130 kilometers per hour, it's 81 miles per hour, to conserve energy in the battery pack so that I'm able to use it up in the fast run. And I did that as well with my Tesla 100, Model S 100D and the Model 3 long range. And in those cars, energy is less, a lot less than in the Mercedes. And there I drove with 100 kilometers per hour to the starting point. And it was always difficult to reach the uh, charger at Ulm, which is this 100 kilometer run from Munich. And there is the first charger. I reset the counter after leaving the suburbs of Munich and floored my right foot. You have already seen some videos from the first run in the back. And the speedometer shows a limit, which is set by Mercedes of 217 kilometers per hour, 135 miles per hour. And the car would go at least 250. You, you really feel the limiter. The drag coefficient is that low at a 0.2. And the power is that high that it should reach at 250, which is 155 miles per hour. Uh, I measured the speed with my uh, GPS system and this reports only 211 kilometers per hour. It's 131 miles per hour. So you see there's a difference again, which had been lower at uh, lower speeds, but is now high at higher speeds. And the official top speed is 210 kilometers per hour for this 
EQS or for the normal EQS, including the 580. Only the AMG motor versions, not the design version I have, but the one with the AMG motor, uh, run faster at a 220, <laughs> that's a little bit more, or 250. Yeah, but there will be a higher consumption and the two motors in the car lead to a higher consumption and the higher weight of the car leads to a higher consumption and therefore I didn't buy those. Higher consumption, I, I need the range. We had seen in the former video that there had been some misreadings uh, at the consumption regarding the speed and the distance of the odometer. That wasn't right as well. We have to correct those data I collected afterwards as well. There is a law on, in Germany to drive on the rightmost lane, <coughs> if possible, when there is no slower traffic present. Slower traffic must keep to the right lane uh, when not passing. Driving that fast, I rarely uh, pull over to the very right lane because I know there will be traffic upcoming in a few seconds and I pull over from the left to the middle of the lanes very often because then you have more space to the left and to the right if a tire blows. Might happen, it's one to a billion, but it might happen. Just uh, to mention it, there is an official statistics. Uh, there are not more accidents on roads without a speed limit than on roads with a speed limit. This sounds well, incredible, but on roads without a speed limit, people drive more concentrated. If you have the roads with a speed limit and you have the assistance systems kicking in and people <laughs> change clothing <laughs> during their ride, uh, then accidents may appear uh, due to those laziness. One word besides driving at 211 kilometers per hour stresses only half as much as driving with 250. Especially in a big Mercedes, this car is not nervous, this car is very powerful but not very sportive or agile. Is it's a big whale and with the heavy fast turning wheels you have an outstanding stability in that car. So it just goes ahead. So uh, it's not that difficult as you might think. Together with the Sun I drove a world record in 2016 in my Tesla Model S P85D on this particular autobahn A8. The task was driving the maximum distance in an electric car including recharging in 24 hours. I succeeded in 2424 kilometers which equals 1507 miles. I know where the problems uh, in quotes on these autobahns are and there are three problems nowadays. There are two short construction sites where I have to reduce the speed to the allowed 80 kilometers per hour which is 50 miles per hour so this is quite a reduction in speed and those one is a bridge being newly built and the other one I don't uh, it's uh, electric power line uh, getting new cables above the street and then the third problem is a speed limit around the town of Augsburg which is only valid after 6 a.m. So I passed that shortly after 5.30. So this was the maximum I was able to take out of that road. And the results are therefore not the exact maximum, but close to. I took the data after exactly 100 kilometers, 62 miles, and I only managed to reach an indicated average speed of 198 kilometers per hour. It's 123 miles per hour. This is due to the roadworks and I hadn't had to slow down due to traffic. There was an, any traffic I could go through completely. With the Tesla I managed to reach 222 kilometers per hour, 138 miles per hour in the Model S 100D. The car was limited to 250, 155 miles per hour, but uh, that car runs in thermal problems if you pass 235 because and therefore they show the speed uh, in red in that cases. So I stayed at 235 with the Tesla. The Model 3 reaches an average of one kilometer per hour less just to 221 kilometers per hour 
equals 137 miles per hour uh, due to the limit of Tesla to 235. It doesn't have enough power uh, to climb the mountains at those speeds uh, in the end of the run. There is going up, going down uh, on the small hills uh, on the uh, slopes of the Alps. In the end, the Mercedes EQS 450 Plus came in with an indicated consumption of 48.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers or 488 watt hours per kilometer or 785 watt hours per mile. That's quite a number and that is what the car says. But these figures do not represent reality. We have to correct quite a bit. As we know from the first consumption tests, see the link below in the description, the distance is reported 1.7% less. We are traveling a greater distance than indicated. We have to correct those 100 kilometers, 62 miles, to 102 kilometers, 63 miles. And I took the time directly after the counter switched to 31 minutes. That equals to 0.517 hours. And multiplying this leads to 194 kilometers per hour, 120 mile, miles per hour. And if we correct the consumption for this, then we reach 47.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer or 478 watt hours per kilometer or 770 watt hours per mile. I drove these consumptions with tire pressure in the front of 2.9 bars and in the back 3.1 bars that equals 42 psi or 45 psi and you might reach less consumption with higher pressures and stiffer wheels due to the higher pressure will result in slightly bigger radii of the tires and the car is limited by the RPMs, either of the tires or in the gear or in the motor, wherever they take that signal from. And a slightly bigger radius of the tire will lead to a higher speed in the end. And how do these results compare to my Teslas? Well, that's not a fair comparison because the Tesla went quite faster than the Mercedes and they had consumptions of 581 watt hours per kilometer, 935 watt hours per mile with the Model 3 long range and 648 watt hours per kilometer or 1043 watt hours per mile with the Model S 100D. To the end, now I answer the question of Gretchen, how far will the car drive at full throttle, at full gate? And you have to divide the net capacity of the battery pack, 107.8 kilowatt hours, by the consumption in kilowatt hours per kilometer, and you reach 226 kilometers or 140 miles. This is a complete theoretical figure. Reality bites with traffic jams, construction roadworks, and not optimal place charging stations. Where do you find an, uh, an autobahn like these A8? Exactly where you live, where you can drive to. Go on. No, you won't find that or very, very rarely. And who wants to wait until a battery pack is full uh, in a stop? on the autobahn. You won't do that. You will stop at 80% when the maximum uh, gain in, in range is through and then the slow filling up uh, commences. No, you won't do that. But you're able to have even higher consumption if you're pressing the car, accelerating, braking, accelerating, braking, because regen of the energy uh, will have some losses. So it's always said that you can regen 70 to 80 percent of the kinetic energy into the battery pack again. Uh, if you have to brake more than the motor is able to regen this 200 kilowatts braking power of the motor, then you have to use your physical. This will lead to yeah, heat, to energy dissipating from the rotors of the brake. This is for today. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come.